It was elegant, comfortable, quiet, futuristic, aerodynamic, inspiring, and fast. In March of 1935, while the country was deep in the Great Depression, the Flying Yankee rolled off the tracks at the Bud Company in Philadelphia. Built for the Boston and Maine Railroad, the gleaming stainless steel skin, revolutionary diesel-electric motor, and futuristic design, it brought a vision of a better future and drew crowds wherever it went. It was one of the fastest trains in America cutting off an hour travel time between Boston and Bangor. Passengers rode in air-conditioned or heated comfort, with meals served at your seat. And, amazingly, it cost the same to ride the Flying Yankee as any other train, except for the last car, the 20-seater Solarium. And then after 22 years and almost three million miles, it was sold for one dollar and put on display where it sat for 35 years. Even in its dilapidated state, the Flying Yankee inspired and intrigued people. Bob Morrill, a well-known and respected New Hampshire entrepreneur, understood that more than anybody. Bob believed that just as the Yankee thrilled people in 1935, it could again. Because the Flying Yankee is more than just a train, it is a vision of creativity and ingenuity. On the trip when they brought it up from Edaville, and, and I thought it was amazing. People would be standing on top of all the overpasses. There were people lining the streets in the towns that we went through. Diamond Jim was, was in charge of the operation. And everywhere you go, there were these old people with their grandchildren standing almost reverently, and you could see them town after town after town bending over to their children and saying, that's a streamliner, that, that's a train. My dad was conductor on some of the fall foliage tours, so really, it's a wonderful experience. Boy, you set the seat on that, you want to be hanging on because you really take off. Beautiful. It's a piece of junk now, but we can make it beautiful. After sitting for 35 years unprotected from the elements, everything on board needed to be rebuilt. And not just rebuilt, but brought up to today's standards. Our goal is to keep the experience just as it was in 1935, but whenever possible, incorporate evolving technologies. What is the mission of the restored Flying Yankee? To serve as an icon for education, economic development, and tourism for the state of New Hampshire. It'll serve as a rolling classroom for kids of all ages, encouraging them to use their imaginations and think outside the box. And because it will be the only train of its type running anywhere in the world, it will attract people from all over. Yankee Mountaineer was um, as good as it got uh, when I was a little boy, and I hope it does something. <laughs> I'm not sure if kids nowadays have something like that that is their standard for as good as things get that comes through their town. I think they probably don't, and they're missing a lot. It's very rare that these trains, any of them, have not been vandalized or um, um, Railroad people, or just plain thievery, have taken uh, things out of them. But this one is complete in almost every detail. I think there's only one door missing in the whole thing. And uh, so we want to try and get at this and fix it up um, before anything can happen. It's going to cost a lot of money, but that's all right. It's worth it, we think. And this valley and this state should have the Flying Yankee.